Are you having a bad hair day? Or no hair day? Is your hair thinning, coming out in clumps in the shower? Then stay tuned, I can help. My name is Kathy A and today I'm doing a very special show all about hair or losing it actually. If your hair is getting thin or it's coming out in clumps in the shower, um, you see a lot of scalp and not so much hair, um, um, there are a lot of non-surgical options for you. Now I guess the first thing would be to have like biotin which is a vitamin supplement that you can take and it's actually uh, formulated to help with nails and skin and hair and it, it feeds those particular types of cells in your body. Um, but if you're not going to go the inner route, and I don't normally like to recommend um, vitamins and supplements because you don't know how they're going to react with different people's medications. It's one of those things that uh, it's personal, you know. So um, there are things that you can use to make your hair thicker and fuller on its own. So if you still have enough of your hair that you just want to help it out a little bit. Um, there is minoxidil, which is a, uh, it's a chemical that works with your scalp and kind of generates, uh, makes the hair follicles uh, want to generate hair. So it, it is kind of a hair growth type of thing. It's very, very expensive though. And I always feel that um, when you stop using that, for some reason your hair doesn't seem to grow <laughs> very much after that. So. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a cheapskate, so I kind of go fast, easy route. So um, these are, this is Nioxin. And these actually, it's just shampoo and a moisturizer. And they have similar chemistry in them where um, they work w within your scalp to help the, the hair follicles grow. And there are also additionally, this is a um, hairspray, a volumizing hairspray that has the same uh, kind of chemistry in it. So um, when you're drying your hair, you can actually use a thickener, and Rusk makes a really good one. So while your your hair is drying, you can spray this on uh, while you're doing your dry and blow out. And you can so now there are techniques when you're drying your hair um, that can help give it fullness and body. And one of them is using a round brush. Um, I use this one. It's got holes in it in between the bristles. So when you're, when you're blow drying with this, the heat is kind of helping your hair uh, gain a little bit of volume. And I learned this from Laura, Shake Up Makeup. She, is, she has um, a channel on here and she was talking about getting some volume in her hair. And what she does is while her hair is still damp, she started to blow dry her hair, but when it's about halfway dry, she sprays some dry shampoo on her damp hair and continues to blow dry it and it just gives a huge amount of volume because volume is really helpful when you have thin hair. Now if you've got like the volume thing going on but you're still seeing an awful lot of scalp there's different types of things that can help you with that. One of them is a topic powder and this is a it's kind of a magnetic filings. They look like teeny tiny little pencil filings almost. They're fibers. It's not powder, but it looks a little bit like powder. I'm just going to show you that. And what you do is you put them into, let me just do this, shake them right onto your head and you see that the part kind of disappears. You notice your hair is really shiny right after your head is really shiny right after a shower and that's when you can get it with this and um, I usually go just this is the light brown to blonde shade and I also have a lighter shade too that's almost a yellow color if you have really light hair it will you know add a little bit more color you can mix them together and make different colors now this one is my favorite actually I like the topic fibers. Now this runs around $20, $25, um, but it works really well. It is a temporary measure. It won't melt down in a rainstorm and run down your face or anything. So I do like this. I think this is one of the best um, temporary helps for your hair to help keeping it look nice. 
Now this one is another type and um, when they first started coming out with these, I think Joan Rivers had one and this was very popular. This is a gray away and this is the proverbial spray paint of hair. So let me see if I can find a, a part for you. I'm sure I have plenty here. Okay, I'll just hold this out. Got to shake it up. <laughs> and it's got a smaller nozzle than regular hairspray. Now it does something similar to the um, to the powder fibers, but it's a little more um, opaque, and you can see it a little bit more. I like the fibers because they can take on the appearance of hair. Uh, the spray paint stuff um, is more of a coating. It's more like painting onto your scalp, so I'm not as keen on that. But, I mean, it is an option for you if you don't like those little fibers or if they get all over. I've had people complain to me that they don't like the fibers. Now, another one is um, when you have, especially like I have medium dark blonde hair, but you can see on the sides here, I've got a little bit of light hair coming in. Not enough to color my hair. I don't want to keep coloring my hair um, all the time because it's not good for your hair to keep coloring it. So this is a temporary measure right here. I've got this gray here. So I'm going to take a wand. Now they have powder versions that look like powdered eyeshadow and you, you kind of paint it over the top. But I think it's more effective to have a liquid base. And this is the Cover Your Gray Waterproof 2-in-1 Hair Color Touch-Up. This is a temporary thing though. Now this has um, a liquid doe foot that you can actually paint your scalp with. And on the other end is like a mascara wand, but it's hair color. And you can just kind of wisp over those hairs. Now I've done this with mascara too, but when it rains, mascara runs out of your head and then you're kind of exposed. <laughs> so, um, I, I generally, they do say you can do your brows with these things too, but I generally don't like to use hair products on my eyes because, again, if it rains or if it's sweaty or anything like that and it starts to melt and run down, it could get into my eyes. And when you're using hair products, that can actually be dangerous. So, I don't like to dye my um, eyebrows either. I, I just think something about having the dye too close to my eyes. I'm just paranoid, but I'd rather err on the side of safety. So this is that other way that you can kind of make your own hair look a little bit better. And of course, styling and coloring. For coloring, I've really been enjoying. This is the new Nice and Easy, and the box is shaped different. It's kind of, you know, bent in a little bit on one end. This is the new Clairol Nice and Easy. This color is number 8A, and I got this because it works well underneath my wigs. <laughs> I color my hair so it looks good under wigs, because I, I still have some of my hair exposed uh, underneath the wig. But what's special about this is they've got a CC cream for hair as your moisturizer, conditioner, last step. And these kits, they're only like seven, eight dollars. You can get them on sale at CVS. And this you get uh, enough of this to use for a few weeks after. It's a really nice conditioner. So I do highly recommend uh, this. I like this even better than the Schwarzkopf. If you're, if you're a drugstore uh, hair color person, um, I do like Madison Reed and um, E-Salon a lot as well, but I, they tend to be a little bit pricey. But they have some great colors and some great styling ideas as well. And they have the uh, non-brassy shampoo glosses, which I do have and I love. So if you're dealing with your own hair, those are my favorites. Now if you still do have hair, but you've got like big gaps on the top, maybe you're going through chemotherapy or you had a shock to your system. I had major surgery in 2002 and my hair came out in big clumps all over my head. I had bald spots and, and it's devastating and as a woman it's extremely disturbing to go out into public because you think everybody's staring at your lack of hair. So there are different types of things you can use to add to your hair to make it look a little fuller, a little better, and fill those patches up. And 
one of the ways, now if you have a section in the front that's really sparse and, and bald, um, they have these little clip-ons and they literally are like toupees we used to, to kid men <laughs> in, the, in the past. These are bangs or fringe as you would call them in England. And these little units, you can get them for somewhere between $12 and $25. Um, get a color that matches your hair fairly closely. And these come with three clips in them. I don't know if you can see that. But the clip, you press it to open it and pop it to close it. Press, pop, press, pop. Okay, and there's three of them on there. And it's made, it's, um, it's woven onto, by machine, onto this little lace front top. And you literally top your hair off with this. Now, it looks stupid now because I've got different hair color than I used to have. But and now you just grab a little bit of hair with that clip and you pop it down a little more. And pop it down. Now, it'll stay in place. And then what you have to do is fuss with it. And you use a special brush for wigs. It can't have any of those metal prongs on it or um, it can't be too harsh. Now, if wigs are too shiny, you can just take some dry shampoo and take some of the shine out. You don't really want anything that's got too much alcohol on it, so you're getting used to it already. And you saw me do it, and you thought, ugh, that doesn't look good at all but you can fuss with it and you can make it look blend it more into your hair so then you've got this little section covered here so they just call this a bang the bangs <laughs> and it comes in a multitude of colors again you you've got to figure out your own hair color and you can change your hair color to match wigs really well so to take it off you just unpop those three little comb clips and it comes right off so that's the bangs now there's different levels of quality to synthetic hair most of these things are made out of synthetic fibers and then they're coated and treated with something um, before they're adhered to the to the lace bottom now this one has two of those clippy things you just clip open clip open okay going to open them up. Now this is the cheapest type of hair and it, a lot of it is, I, I used to call it the old lady poodle haircut thing, but this is a topper and I guess you could call it a true toupee. Now when I had wavier hair and it was blonder, this actually worked pretty well for me, but this goes right on the top. I know it looks like a, a rat nested up there. But you have to work it in with your own hair and if you've got curly hair this is a wonderful type of thing but there's different grades of synthetic hair now you have to imagine that I have short curly hair and it does add a lot and they this is a very very uh, light touch and you can see like if I had lighter kind of curly hair this would work nicely as a topper and it stays put wind storms and everything these little clips hold it really well so that is another type of topper and the reason that synthetic hair looks different depending on whether you get it some of them look like Halloween costumes they're so cheaply made and they're made their fibers it's what these fibers are made out of and what they're dipped in and treated with that makes them a little more expensive now this kind is cheap and as you start to use it you can see it starts to get kind of ratty looking and sometimes they're glued the hairs are glued into place and you can start seeing little pieces of glue on it that's a really cheap wig and you really kind of want to avoid that it's worth paying a little bit of extra money to get a uh, better usage out of a hair piece now another type of uh, <laughs> hair piece is this one and I wore this a lot actually it looks like a hairband of hair and so what you do is you you put it down almost like it's it's a hairband and you bring it back up and yes it looks stupid but what you have to do is move your real hair over the top 
and when you have your own hair over the top it doesn't look as bad of course I have a different color on but um, so the top is completely open on this and so I've got like bangs and a little bit of body here in the middle and again you know my hair color is different now so this doesn't blend as well as it did but you can pull your hair over so you don't see that little line of demarcation here <laughs> So I haven't worn this in a while. I used to have much lighter hair and it worked better with it, but that's another type of addition to your hair that you can do. Now this type is kind of interesting. It's, it's an open air topper. And this has big openings in it big like holes in it and the purpose of this and it just goes on almost like a hat you're putting on I lean into the front put on the front and I pull it up and what you do is you literally take pieces of your own hair and pull them through the holes so that they mesh with the hair that's here and when you get your hair coming through here, it blends nicely. And again, I have, I have darker hair, so it doesn't look as good. But this stays put pretty well, and you can pull as much hair out as you want of your own. And it blends really nicely when that happens. So um, this doesn't look as good on me now. Again, the hair color's not there. But you just pull your hair through, and you can use literally use a crochet hook a large crochet hook to do it and it gives you a lot of added body but you still got your own hair going on there so it's a very natural looking hair piece okay <laughs> unceremoniously throwing these up now a lot of um, I know a lot of middle-aged ladies like to do this they pull their hair into a ponytail and then they add a hairpiece on the back top. Let me just. Uh... So you've got your own hair in the front, and you're going to take like a uh, a pony wrap and make a ponytail. But what you do is you only don't pull it all the way through. You still leave it. So there's a little bump there like the men do with their ponytails. And I pull out a little hair on the front and the sides here. And then you take something like this. And it's like a ponytail wrap, but it's hair. And you wrap it around, twist it, and wrap it again. And you've got an instant updo. And you can use you know, your comb to um, kind of get it in place. And I like to fasten it with a bobby pin. Do they still call them bobby pins? I don't know. Once you put that in there, you're good to go. And you look like you're really pulled together. This is on those days when you just don't feel like doing anything, when you're not feeling well. Um, and it, it makes it look like you've got hair. Again, my hair was lighter when I used to wear this one, so <laughs> I'm apologizing. So bobby pins and those ponytail holders are pretty helpful. And this is a slightly different style. You can use one that's a little bit different, that goes a little bit more. And then they have messy little, you know, they look like your hair only messed up, but you can make some really cute looks with that. And there's another type too and these are a little bit cheaper and you can find these like in Ulta and um, in Sally's Beauty but they open up like a hair clip and you literally clip this over that bump and you've got a hair clip. I don't like these as much. I think they they can hurt and they can look a little unnatural but they have that 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 clamp 
And again, you would need to, you know, spray the dickens out of this with some dry shampoo to take the shininess out. Again, it's, it, they are dipped in this chemical to help preserve them and help keep them shaped. So they are slightly cheaper than some of the nicer hair wigs. Now they do make hair wigs out of human hair and a lot of people donate their hair to charity and um, they dye it, they sanitize it and they dye it. And they usually dye it a light color and then you, you pick it out and they dye it a darker color and then they treat it with something. So it, it reacts a little bit differently than real human hair does to hair color, things like that. However, it does style and it's heat resistant. Now this one is another kind of topper or toupee. And this one has a slightly larger cap to it and it has one of those combs on the two in the back and there are two in the front and the bangs are in the front. So what I do with this is I literally, I'm looking in the mirror, I'm just like this and I flop it on top of my head and drop it down on top of my head. And I look for those front two and I attach them. You're just snapping them, snapping them in. You get an instant hairdo from this. I actually wear this one to work. Now this is in solid, it's in solid, you can't pull it. And what's nice about this is they see your scalp here. They can see a little of your scalp here. So this looks like it's your hair. It's a really, really, this is my favorite kind of wig actually out of all of them because it's your hair on the bottom. This is my favorite kind of wig because it's your hair on the bottom. This is my hair here and this is the wig hair. And it really does give a beautiful look. And when the wind blows, your hair's on the bottom your scalp is showing. They don't see the clips. The only, I think the only time I messed up is I left the tag on. There's a tag on the inside and I left it on with sticking out the back. <laughs> I think that's the only time I really goofed up there with that. But. And um, yeah, you just use this and again you're using a brush that's got straight plastic teeth to it that's not going to be too damaging. You don't want to pull too hard on a wig. If you're brushing the bottom of it, hold it so it's not tugging constantly on the root of it because again you can start to get it ratty looking. It will start to get tiny little shreddy hairs in it and it can look really ratty. I'd say the lifespan of a wig can be probably about six months to two years depending on how often you wear it and how well you treat it. And I'll go over how to clean wigs shortly. So that's a topper. And I have a second one. It's, it, I got it from a different source. I think I got it on Amazon. And it looks different. I'll show you how the two compare. So you just lift it off. This is really nice for summertime when you, um, it's like wearing a light hat. It's really not bad. I always look at the ratings if I'm looking at these things um, online. And I will show you, I get a lot of my stuff from Paula Young. This is a Bridgewater, Massachusetts based company. Um, they have a lot of good, I have to show you the, um, these are the bangs and they show before and after. So these are the bangs and those are, um, it's called Easy Bang and it's $19.99 for the bangs. Um, then we've got some of those ponytail things we we're talking about. And those also run around um, $19.99. So you can get these on sale too. There's a little clippy ones, you know, and you can see that. And those really are, are really nice, fast and easy for you. And I want to show you these because they'll show you these, these are those little toppers the little topper thing that I had, the little round ball of fluff on the top. That is the um, delicate touch and then they tell you it's it's some kind of synthetic wig. This is a different kind of synthetic wig and you'll see the pricing goes up as it goes into a different type of synthetic wig. Before I move on to the other wigs, I want to tell you about taking care of your wig. Now when you have this kind of a thing, it looks like hair but you don't 
shampoo it and moisturize it like you would hair. It is an inanimate object and you need to clean it. So I, after about every three wearings, I will put a tub of cold water and it has to be cold water. And this is a special shampoo. I got this from the John Rene company. You just put some of the shampoo in and I put the wigs in this bucket of cold water with the shampoo in it and I kind of just whoosh them around a little bit then I let them sit for about a half an hour in that tub of cold water with the shampoo. After that I will take them all out and I will push cold water to rinse each of them. And then I don't stretch them or comb them or anything. I hang them up. Uh, this is a great way to hang a wig. I just stick it right on. These wire things are pretty cheap. And it's good to have a wire rather than those uh, styrofoam heads because the wire lets the air get to the wig and it will dry better if you do that. So um, it, I have everything lined up. <laughs> And I, when I didn't have these, I used to line them up all around the tub or, you know, that sweater drying rack. So once I have it on the rack, I will actually spray it with a conditioner. This is a conditioner. Now you can find the conditioner and shampoo for uh, wigs in Sally Beauty and you may even find it in anywhere where you get wigs. I know that John Renault um, site has a really quality one. This one is called Especially Yours Conditioner and you spray it on almost like hairspray onto, onto the wig and you let the wig dry with this on it and it kind of seals in a little bit of um, you know the, the nice texture that it has and the nice color that it has. It will last for you a lot longer if you take care of it like that. So every three wearings, if it's a really hot humid day or you've got a lot of makeup on and the makeup's all on the bottom rim of it, you know, you get makeup all over it, <laughs> you're going to want to uh, wash it, you know, a little more often if you do do that. But I, every three wearings, and I rotate my wigs, I rotate them, um, they're very confused at work because they don't know what's going on. I have different hair every day. So <laughs> I'm going to take this off and we're going to go into some more severe wigs. So one important thing that you need to know is whether you had a big head or not. Of course I do. <laughs> Physically, as well as psychologically. So what they do is they have, um, and it's very helpful and it's on the order form, they have a way that you can measure your head. And you measure it three different ways. And what they do is they have a series of three measurements going across here. And if you're closest to some of the measurements, you may be off on one, but closer to the other ones, always go for the larger. <laughs> so they want you first to measure from the back of your neck to your head. And I am 22 and a half. Another measurement, and that's from the back of my neck where the back of my neck stops to the very top of my forehead. That's this measurement here. And that's 13 and a half. Thir so here to here. And that's 13. So that's like petite. So it looks like if you average out all of your measurements, you will come up with the right thing. And I'm an average head. You don't want to get a wig that's too large of a cap because it'll move around. It won't stay on correctly. It'll move back. If you get a strong wind, to start your whole head will move back. Um, at my wedding, I, I actually had a wig on for my wedding. And um, everybody's saying goodbye at the end of the night and they're giving me a hug. And one of Bud's friends gave me a big hug and he pulled on my hair and my hair went right back. <laughs> it was really like mortifying to me. I had to run into the ladies room. <laughs> So a lot of people like to wear a wig cap, and what it is, it looks like a, a net wig that you tuck your hair all underneath it, and it, it holds in a band around your head. So you've got your hair all the way up and out of the way, so when you put a wig on, 
it's a smoother transition. Your own hair isn't sticking down underneath it if it's a shorter wig. And it tends to hold everything well. But I find, and I would never recommend it to anybody, especially if you're going through chemotherapy or something like that, because the band is so tight because it's holding the unit on, it's, it gives you a headache. It gives me a headache. So I don't wear a band with um, the uh, thing, even though it's supposed to be the best way to do it because your hair isn't bunched all up behind in a ponytail or, you know, hanging down funny. It's all underneath the hairnet. So it's really, uh, that's a personal choice of mine, but it is an option. If you have longer hair in places and you're having a shorter wig, like a short bob or something, which they're the cutest ones. And um, women who have really dark skin tones and can wear black wigs. Black wigs to me are so natural looking and you can get so many cute styles. Uh, I think the hardest colors really are the blondes. It's really hard to get the blondes to look natural. I wanted to give a little bit of a note about extensions. There's two types of extensions. There's um, a clip-in type of extension and then there's the little individual, they take a tiny little grouping and they kind of glue on extensions in the salon. It's expensive but that process is the only way it will look natural. I bought these off of Wish.com. But basically what you do is um, take a straight section of hair here and these are those same kind of clips that are on the inside you pop them out to open them and you pinch them back in to close them and pop and open and pinch to close and what you're going to do here is take a section and you're going to grab some hair with it and pinch it close grab some hair with the next one pinch it close grab some hair with the next one and pinch it close. And then you comb your own hair over the top. And you've got this wonderfully lumpy section into your hair. And when the wind blows, <laughs> they see it. So I'm not a big fan of extensions like this. So I, I've seen women really rock this look and really look good with it. But I just, I don't have the patience to do this. And um, I think it looks unnatural and I think if somebody's standing close to you they can see all the little layers of lumps uh, on your scalp. So I don't recommend extensions. I've tried them. I don't like them. So it's really good to get the right color. Now wigs come in every color basically that hair comes in and you can get specialty colors, rooted colors, uh, even colors that look like you need to do your hair color again. Um, they have a really nice assortment, different reds, different blondes, you know, uh, variegated. And what you need to do is find a color that's close to your own and then um, you can get a wig that matches it. And they're pretty close to these, they're pretty close. So um, this one is one of those tricky ones that you kind of need to match your own hair color for it to work well. And this is a hair band. A lot of times they have regular hair band, like a, a black band or blue band, and then there's hair coming out of the back, and cancer patients like to use this. Now it's partially a capped wig. It does have these bands that you can adjust on it. There's these little bands, and there's Velcro in the back. And in the front, it's got a clip to hold it in place, which I do like. So with this one, it gives the appearance that it's pulling your own hair back. I'm gonna just snap that into place, and then I'm going to pull the wig down so that it looks like my hair. So even if you've got like really nasty looking hair, you can tuck your hair underneath it. So you get that kind of body going on, you know, like you've got 
paint it on. This isn't my style, but you know. <laughs> a lot of younger people can wear this really well. I cannot so much. I'm going to unsnap it. Pull it off. Now, a lot of you may not know this, but for my wedding, I actually wore a wig for my wedding. And it looks a lot like this. Angelique from Jean Renault. It's a great style. You can get it in a variety of colors. It's a little bit long. You can see there's uh, the way the cap is. If you turn it inside out, you can see that that the hair is, is hand tied in the cap. There's that the tag in the back. So with a wig, I like to look down into it. I turn it upside down, almost like this. And I look down into it, and I touch the top of my head with the band. Now I pull it up. Now you have to fuss with a wig a little bit to make it work for you. Make sure your, your side flaps. Make sure your side flaps are down all the way. And if you want, you can use a bobby pin to secure it. But this is, again, my hair right here. This is my hair. And this is that hair. So you see how nicely it blends? That's why I have my hair a little bit darker. Because when I wear this and the wind blows, it does look like it's still all part of my hair. But that is Angelique from Jean Renault. When you get your wig, it usually comes in a box like this, wrapped nicely, and then it's encased in this horrible fishnet hair net that looks like Ruth Buzzy from Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. <laughs> um, yeah, you take this off, but you leave all the tags on. It comes with a tag hanging from it. You leave the tag attached to it so that you can try it on because they do let you return them. But once that tag is removed, you can't return it. So you're kind of, you own it, you know? So let me just fix, I can't stand to be on camera without my hair looking at least. Uh. So let's use that. Let's use that spray paint stuff. Here we go. Now when it dries, it dries a little more naturally. You saw that. You saw it. Da ting And there's usually two sets of numbers on your wig. There's the design style of it, and then there's the color combination. Uh, the color combination that I use is 1426A, usually. 1426, which usually matches this with, like, if you were to do some paint some stripes with one of these kits, you can paint some stripes into your hair and have like, you know, a nice little stripey thing going on that goes better with the wigs. So I use just the La Petite kit and I take the brush that comes with it and I literally just tap it in and I draw lines. I draw lines in my hair. I don't pull them through the cap or any of that stuff. I just draw the lines with the, with the brush. So hairdressers out there are probably cringing. <laughs> and don't be afraid to like use um, clips and put up your hair. You can do that. You can, you can do things with your hair that you wouldn't normally even think about. You know, if you want to use um, a barrette, you can do that. You know, put it, put it in a barrette in the back and pull some of your own hair down. You can do things to make it look a little more natural. I love using a hat. So. Yes. <laughs> so, I want to talk about um, style changes. Now, you don't have to just wear wigs because you're losing your hair. You can wear wigs to have fun with them and, and have, if you're having, like I said, if you're having a bad hair day like this, where you've got hair 
but you know you don't feel like styling it or you just you know you can just doing the thing with the ponytail to me is the easiest fastest thing to do it looks fine you look pulled together um, but you can also try different colors out where you know a lot of times you think gee I'd like to be a redhead you know and let's try being a redhead I, always, I tried coloring my hair red so many times and that's a really high maintenance color it really is but let's try it and see what I look like as a redhead looking for my side flaps make sure they're down side flaps also show you where the manufacturer wants you to place it on your head so when there's two side there's thick flaps they feel like you know those flaps on the side of those hats it's kind of like that but it's on the inside of your wig you feel them you can also secure these in with bobby pins so what do you think redhead get used to it you get used to it wear it at least an hour or two in the house and then after an hour you will feel more natural and people be used to you like if your best friend sees you bald one day and then she sees you like this the next day she she will notice it but most people don't they don't notice it I mean it's not all about you entering the room but you know what if it makes you feel more confident then go for it. It's really fun. So now I see the redhead thing. What if I went really dark with my hair? Let's try it. What's nice about wigs is that they can be styled and cut and some are made out of a heat resistant fiber so if you have a low setting on your uh, styling device you can actually um, curl them. So this is a really long dark wig I guess some night when Bud wants to cheat on me I can be the other woman <laughs> now if there's a lot of hair you can actually cut into it I would not Cut into. I look like something out of. What was that movie, The Grunge? <laughs> um, I would cut bangs into this. If I were to keep this, I would cut bangs into it. And to cut bangs, you would um, have the wig in the exact place you're going to have it. And I would take that center section, this section. And I would cut it. I did cut bangs once on the air. You can also take your wig and pull parts of it back so that it's, um, you know, it's styled a little bit. So I don't mind. This is actually what my natural hair color is. This is, well, with not, not with the stripes, but. So you can play with it and you can work with it. I can tell you that more attractive wigs are a, a little bit shorter than this. Um, I'm 60, so you know, this is kind of like a little long, I think. But it doesn't look unnatural, it looks a little silly because there's so much volume. But you can take this, and I would call the local wig shop and ask if they recommend a stylist. They may even have one on board. Um, they will style your hair, they'll trim it, they'll thin it down so it looks more natural. You can actually take a wig like this and style it so it's bobbed and short and uh, looks nice. So, so, don't be afraid of wigs and don't settle for going out and feeling bad because you've got bald spots and you're self-conscious about them. You don't have to. You can have fun. You can wear wigs. You can wear wiglets. You can wear little pieces. You can spray paint your scalp. You can feel better. And I think that that's what really is important. So. Hey, Budman. Yep. What's going on? I just finished filming. Where have you been? I, I tried calling you before. Uh, uh, Kathy, you know, I heard you calling, 
but I couldn't come over right then because me and the boys were playing and we just can't find the sound in just a few more hours on yours. I'll come right home to you. Oh, Kathy, I heard you calling. What's a poor lad to do? Anyway, I just want you to know that as far as I'm concerned, you're doing a really good job with the wigs. I wish you had watched Mildred and Wigs Are Me to, uh, you know, to totally uh, get it down. Like the scarf thing, is that working? That's pretty patriotic, but yeah, man. Well, you yeah. gotta be. You, you know? look like a cross between Greg Ullman and David Lee Roth. Well, at least one of them is alive. That's, <laughs> that's something. And of course, David Lee Roth no longer has hair. And why he hasn't gone to Mildred yet? I know what happened to I it. I don't know. <laughs> actually, well. yeah, I actually normal human hair. So I had to pay David Lee, you know, quite a bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. See how wigs can transform somebody. I mean, Ab yeah. absolutely. You've seen me before, and I'm the one who's yeah. always begging to get to whatever the next big number is of subscribers. Yeah. So if you haven't subscribed yet. Click on the button, ring the notification. What else do they always say? Click, um, ring my bell. Yeah, click on the bell. Right, but but there's another thing. They all say, oh, and here's some other interesting stuff. We're sure you're gonna find exciting too. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Bud Man, Anytime. for stopping by. Yeah. And uh, the name of the song is going to be Oh Kathy. Oh Kathy. What can I do? Like Oh Yoko. <laughs> Um, uh, yes, and I'm singing the Yoko part. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you, Bud Man. Yeah. So, the magical world of wigs. It's not just for people who are bald or are thinning hair. It's not a crime to wear a wig. It's not a crime to lose your hair. So, stop treating yourself like a criminal. Stop being so self conscious. You can look fabulous every day. If you're having a bad hair day, you can turn it into a good hair day. You can experiment. Blonde, brunette, redhead, or rock star. <laughs> I hope everybody's having a wonderful week and have a beautiful day. And I hope everybody is having a wonderful week and have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles.